Okay. Well, I wanted to give a small uh, introduction to Scalable Ogo, which was a, a Google server written on an object of C. And, oops. Well, first a bit about Token Group here, Org. Uh, this is a larger project uh, which is, uh, well, more like a framework for, for building Group uh, servers. Pretty much like NoStep is a framework for building uh, GUI applications. So we are focusing on uh, building reusable uh, objects for building such servers. Uh, because the requirements uh, for Google servers are pretty different. So it's, there's not just one Google server which, uh, which fits all, but you usually want to have different kinds of Google servers. We have a lot of code, a pretty large code base uh, for calendar calendaring and contact management. Uh, we have some uh, simple document management stuff. We have a lot of protocol implementations. Uh, by protocols, I mean uh, the protocols which are used between client applications like RSS feed readers or uh, calendaring clients and the servers. And we currently we have two implementations of Groupware servers. So the first one is uh, Open Groupware, the regular CAT Open Groupware. Uh, it's for smaller uh, smaller work groups and has a pretty complex functionality. And the so scalable O, which is a bit new, uh, newer, was uh, I think started in 2004 or something, or 2005. Um, it's a bit refreshed and has a different focus, which I come to soon. Well, again, uh, as I said, Open Groupware uh, is not just for building those two uh, implementations, but we uh, really want to bring forward Google standards, uh, standards as well, like for example like Calder and Groupware. And we also do not want to reinvent uh, the software. For example, we are not building LDAP software on email servers, stuff like that, because there are really <coughs> great projects which uh, already exist, for example, Spyros for mail servers or Korea for mail servers. It doesn't really make any sense to replace those. The ELAFAC integration or is something recent? The ELAFAC integration is something which. Yeah, Mailafax is uh, integrated into the uh, email system usually, so it's not really related to the Goofy part, but it fits into the larger, uh, larger picture. Uh, as I said, it belongs a bit to uh, uh, Goofy standards, we want to connect native clients, so uh, we do not want to be a uh, web, uh, web Cookware project. And of course, we want to use uh, <coughs> free software, so we do not uh, use any non free software in, in building the implementations, but it's all GPR or LGPR. So, to get back to scalable order, um, it's a bit difficult to explain because, especially, end users do not understand uh, why they are different, uh, why different approaches are necessary. Uh, for example, Cat Ogo uh, has a lot of functionality. It's not really slow, but it's uh, intended for a few hundreds of users at most. So you can waste a lot of CPU on on doing complex stuff. Uh, in contrast, the Scalable Ogo system is uh, designed for for hundreds, uh, hundred thousands of users. And to do that, you need to take a lot more care about processing power and storage speed and stuff like that. So we really uh, shrunk the functionality uh, to get a scalable server. Um, so what does scalable Ogo do? Uh, it's really based on the standard stuff. So for email, of course, we use IMAP4 and we just reuse the existing mail servers. And the address book and the, and the calendar, which are integrated, are com <coughs> completely based on iCalendar and WeCard. So the, we actually store the data in iCalendar and WeCard. Uh, so there is no mismatch between native clients uh, or open source native clients and the server. And it's also very simple. For example, in the pet open group there, you can have records which are really interconnected. For example, if you have a company contact, you can as, uh, assign those uh, company records uh, or the uh, employees and stuff like that, and the system maintains a connection between them. 
but uh, database-wise, this is quite expensive because you need to do the joins between the uh, different tables. Uh, that's not possible in scalable OVO. In scalable OVO, a contact is always on its own. It's just a V-card which is stored in the server. So it's very simple to remove and very fast to retrieve and to store, but it doesn't allow those complex links between the objects. Um, <coughs> but as I said, a, a common problem in groupware is that if a groupware provides more functionality, like for example open groupware, the native clients usually don't uh, support that. So this is why many groupware projects provide web interfaces, because they can do anything they want in the web interface. Uh, but native clients like Evolution or uh, Contact, they are not easily extensible. So it's hard to add uh, complex functionality, but uh, they are the perfect fit for a scalable mode because it just uses the same thing. Um, a bit about the history, the scalable OGO was initially developed for a, a large French ministry, which had about 60,000 users, which uh, um, had to be supplied using that Google solution. And they have had three basic require, uh, requirements. First, of course, it would need to be scalable, because they wanted to host it on a small cluster, a single small cluster, so in a central location, so they didn't have thousand uh, cookware servers, but just one. Um, they wanted to support uh, native clients, Mozilla native clients, Sunbird and Thunderbird, uh, <coughs> because uh, uh, in, in France they wanted to replace uh, uh, a proprietary clients like uh, Outlook uh, using uh, open source ones. And uh, third, they still wanted to have a web interface, but the requirement was that the web interface uh, should look exactly like Thunderbird or Sunbird, like the desktop applications. And, well, Scalable OVO was developed to, to meet all of those requirements. First, scalability. Uh, as I said, uh, yeah, it's a very complex topic, but uh, one thing is that a uh, uh, regular database-based uh, uh, groupware servers like Open Groupware, the, the old one, uh, or eGroupware, there are I think about a hundred more, uh, they usually have a single tables, uh, database tables, for example an events table, uh, where all the events are stored, and all events of the system are stored in that single table. And of course it's fine if you have a million events or something like that, that's so fine for uh, a, a SQL database. But if you have 60,000 users with, uh, which have maybe 10,000 events each, uh, it doesn't scale anymore because you get tables which are huge. And um, so in scalable OVO this is solved because uh, the middleware of scalable OVO can distribute uh, the data between different tables. And those tables can even live on different servers. So actually in the French project we had uh, three backend servers. So uh, you could assign user groups to the servers and the data would be stored on different cluster machines. Um, then as I mentioned before, it stores raw iCalendar and recard. So it just takes, for example, if Sunbird writes an event into the server, it just takes uh, the iCalendar and stores that as it gets. Uh, the event. So it's very fast operation, it's just a single update in the, in the database. And to support the web interface, um, we also uh, ex uh, have an index over that information. Um, that's necessary because if you uh, just store the iCalendar files in, in the database, you can't uh, use uh, SQL to perform queries on, that, on them. So, for example, if you want to show a week of events, you would need to pass each icon in a file, uh, and well, that's too slow. So we have a separate table uh, which uh, extracts the core information from these files, like start time, end time, uh, and it's stored in, a, in an additional database table um, for fast queries in the web interface. So the web interface can say, give me the appointments of, the, of this week. Um, the index tables can also be split, they can, they can be multiple tables and they can even live on different uh, database servers than the content tables which store the, the payload. So that's 
very interesting because uh, the, the content uh, tables uh, don't need to be on a very fast storage uh, because uh, for example they could be on a slow rate uh, rate one or something like that which uh, ensures integrity because it's the important information whereas the index tables they can be reconstructed from the content so you can place them on volatile storage like a solid state disk or something if it breaks you can just uh, throw it away and rebuild the index from the content tables so it makes a lot of sense. Um, so it can be more aggressive uh, in uh, optimization on the index tables. Well, yeah, uh, third item, uh, if you don't use the web interface at all, but the native client, they just retrieve those pre-rendered iCalendar or Vika files. So it's not like an uh, other Google servers that the iCalendar or vCards are deconstructed into database fields and need to be reconstructed uh, to the iCalendar file on retrieval. We just store them as, as they come and well, we just need to pull them out of the database and uh, send to the client, which is very, very fast. Um, native clients, our approach was to uh, push open standards. So actually we started out with GroupDev, which is not really a standard, but more like a convention we uh, found with the KDE developers in 2004, I think. Uh, in the meantime, there uh, we have CalDev, which is now an official standard. It's an RFC for something, I don't know the exact code, but it's a real internet standard and it's widely deployed, it's scanning a lot of momentum. For example, Google and Yahoo also support uh, CalDAV now. CalDAV is uh, in the works. It's also going to be a regular RFC. So we are very close in finally having real standards for, for Google. And uh, those standards are also uh, supported by a scalable Oracle. Um, actually, we extend some clients, uh, the open source clients, which is very bad, do not support standards very well, unfortunately. So the CalDAV implementations uh, in Mozilla, for example, do not provide all the necessary yeah, features. Okay. Uh, the, the Atlas book cannot do contact and stuff like that. It's not possible to write. Uh, I think in the, in the regular, I don't know. However, we have plugins for <coughs> those uh, uh, clients, which uh, <coughs> add some listing functionality. For example, we have the CalDAV address book for, for, the, uh, for the Thunderbird uh, address book and uh, there are also extensions for um, the CalDAV uh, connector in uh, Mozilla. So it's, uh, it's actually the primary client for scalable over it works really well. Um, then we have a Thunderbolt plugin which is Thunderbolt is a Java server which is used to synchronize uh, mobile devices like, like uh, mobile telephones and uh, we have a plugin which directly connects the database because the database stores the iCalendar and vCard files you can just push that into the funnel um, well because we uh, s uh, support those standards especially Carter of course we you can use Apple icon for accessing the server well you can even use a regular web dev client to browse the collections and stuff like that also quite nice. Uh, well, the web interface, as I said, it was a requirement that they wanted to have the web interface that it looks exactly like, like the native clients. Now, the native the sunbird isn't very beautiful. <laughs> it's actually quite ugly, but the web interface looks exactly like that. So people often ask us why the web interface looks so ugly. Uh, it's just because the Mozilla interface looks so ugly. Um, it's also very scalable because um, we do a lot of uh, HTTP <coughs> checks inside the web interface. Um, HTTP is actually a very scalable protocol and has a lot of features uh, to support scalability. Uh, one is the e-tag. Uh, the e-tag says whether a web page changed in the me meantime. For example, if the browser gets an uh, HTML page, you can send a small token with that, which represents the state of that page. So and, uh, if the browser tries to uh, re-get the same page, he sh just checks whether the token changed. If it didn't change, he can pull it from its local cache or in-memory cache, so it's very fast. 
the same is true for proxies. You can, um, between the actual application server and the browser, you can put a proxy like Squid, or there are other proxies. Apache also has a proxy module in that, um, which can cache the information for multiple users. For example, the browser connects the, the, the proxy server, and the proxy server asks, asks the application just once, and if another user retrieves the same information, uh, it's already already in the proxy, so it doesn't even need to be bothered with multiple users. Um, and the, the, the thing where this is working best is emails, because emails in an IMAX server can't be changed. They're always the same. If you would change an email in an IMAX server, you would it would get assigned a new ID. So if you have an ID in the IMAX server, so it never changes what uh, what is stored uh, in there. So actually, if um, an email is rendered by the web interface, the HTML page of that email, which shows that email, uh, it can be cached by the browser locally. So if it retrieved it once, and the user looks at the, the same email a second time, it's already in the browser cache. So it's really nice. Um, well, some buzzword stuff. So mm -hmm. scalable algo is um, REST, which is basically uh, another word for HTTP, in my opinion, because uh, uh, well, it's a style on how to write uh, HTTP services, and scalable algo is uh, implementing or built around those web protocols, which use uh, the standard HTTP words: put, get, delete to read and write the iCalendar and record files. So you, for example, to, to see the iCalendar in, um, in the web browser, you can just enter the URL to the iCal file, and instead of uh, adding a .html, you will add a .ics, and then you get the iCalendar representation directly pulled out of the database. That's pretty nice. And, well, even for email. You can so, so even the web interface is built around uh, that REST principle or that uh, web dot hierarchy. So you can actually use uh, scalable over as a uh, IMAP HTTP gateway. For example, uh, if you have a user, it could would be the login name in the IMAP server. Uh, you can traverse the IMAP uh, folder hierarchy and get to the email ID, like one three email. If you retrieve that using an HTTP library or a web browser or whatever you want to do, and you actually get the MIME, the MIME which represents that uh, email. And it's even better because the IMAP servers do not uh, also have the facility to extract specific parts from such a MIME mail. For example, if you get a multi-part mail which contains a text, uh, a text and an image, um, you can actually address the image using a code. For example, that could be the image with, which is embedded in the MIME structure. And all the work is done by the IMAP server, so it's just a gateway. That's also how the web interface shows uh, images. If you bring up the HTML page uh, representing that email, uh, you, it's something like one to feed.html. And that HTML page actually refers the part from the IMAX server, so it's really fast. It's pretty interesting. I think it's pretty interesting for a lot of different projects as well, just that gateway, because it makes it very easy to uh, develop uh, email clients, <coughs> because it's much easier to work with HTTP than with IMAX, which can be quite, can be quite complex. So, where are we? Actually, we are very close to a 1.0 release, so it's 1.0 release candidate 9 was released last week. Actually, it's in production at a really large customer size. So there are, I think in Canada, uh, the guys which do the main development, which is Inverse, uh, they have about three customers, each with about uh, 40,000 users. So it's uh, <coughs> actually deployed. Anyways, uh, uh, the final release will come uh, soon. Um, the development at this time is mostly done by a company called Inverse, which is in uh, Canada, and they only do open source stuff, so it's not they do not sell anything, so they're not a licensed uh, 
uh, business or something like that. They are basically a hosting company for large uh, ministries and uh, education facilities in, in Canada. And uh, well, you can get the code at uh, a monotone repository from Inverse directly or from Subversion. Every time there is a release like RC9, uh, they push the state to the Subversion server so that we have a proper release history and a central server. So actually the development is going very well. We don't need that much, uh, much help on the core server. But uh, what we look, would like to uh, see is more support for more native clients. And that's something I said before, the situation in open source clients and uh, open standards is very bad. Um, so we would really talk to Evolution, contact developers for improving that. Because um, we, are, we are mostly doing or helping with the Mozilla stuff, so that th this is a primary client. But uh, we would really uh, love to get some people on improving evolution contact to support standards. Um, well, yeah, code internals. Um, well, it's in Objective C, it's written in Objective C, so it's real compiled code. And you get a real daemon out of that, not some virtual machine file which you need to run in. Uh, something which takes 10 gigabytes of memory and just <laughs> wow, <wipes it> wow. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, well, Objective-C is, some may not know, it's really a part of GCC as well. You compile that, you get a regular binary out of that, and uh, well, it's very fast, it's optimized, it's not as boring like Java, and it's password compliant thanks to the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, the iPhone, I think, uh, brings a lot of developers to Objective-C because all the software written on that was written out of in Objective-C. Uh, so it's quite great. Um, and I try to, to bring up a diagram of how it all fits together. It's basically the Objective-C runtime, which is uh, coming with a GNU compiler. Uh, then we have the GNU set based library, which is used by Scalable Algo. And for open group there, for historical reasons, we use a different foundation library, but those foundation libraries uh, contain stuff like string handling or uh, map tables and all the basic stuff. Then we have the SOAP application server. Uh, this is doing a lot of things. Uh, it's basic, well, as the name say, uh, says, it's an application server. It does all the HTML rendering, but it also contains all the libraries which are used by Scalable, OGO, and OpenUFAIR. For example, generating iCalendar files or parsing them, uh, drawing deep views in HTML, and all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff in SOPI, and it's, I would say it's about 70% of scalable OGO, maybe even a bit more because they, we use such a lot of the shared code. So, well, and on top we have the two applications the one which is more complex, and the one which is very lightweight and fast. <coughs> yeah, how you can reach us? Well, of course, using the website at scalable.org or opengroup.org. And the uh, mailing is for uh, scalable.org or solo at opengroup.org. And it's open to everyone. Everyone can subscribe. Well, and join us and comment and help us test. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, that's about it. Questions? What's the status of packaging of the SOAP framework and of the PR component of the scalable OGO? Because I heard myself for you say years ago installing yeah, the OGO server and the, all the compliance between the libraries of the SOAP uh, framework and all the upper components was a, a mess with the Indian. It's Debian. Debian, um, yeah. I'm not sure they are providing Debian binaries, actually. I know that they provide uh, young packages for, for a Red Hat, uh, but I don't know about Debian. So, uh, it is something by the for Red Hat. But there's, uh, there's packaging for Red Hat, uh, or RPMs, okay. and uh, that's actively maintained by Ingress. I think they're using the same packages okay. for their customer deployments. So it's supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, 
it's not that easy to build from source code because uh, <laughs> scalable algo uh, patches a few things of uh, Sophie. Uh, it's mostly because we use those different foundation libraries. I <laughs> Could you discuss uh, what is the role of the foundation? Is it disappearing gradually, or um, well, <laughs> why are you holding on to it? It's clearly the better library because I worked on it. But um, well, the Lib Foundation isn't really developed any further. It has, uh, it's, I mean, it's stable and does what it does, and uh, we do not put a lot of work into that uh, to port it over to user base. But I think maybe this weekend. Uh, Sebastian is very active in, in that. Uh, maybe you can convince Richard to. The big effort now is on the on the scalable. Uh, Not anymore on the over. The well, scalable over is used is already using most of the like No, no, so the, the big effort now on development yeah. goes on the left exactly. side. Exactly. We basically would like to replace this with okay. the base library. Um, the major advantage for open groupware would be that uh base library has better Unicode handling. So the foundation only really does isolate in one. Uh, so open groupware is a bit restricted uh, with foreign languages. For example, Czech, Czech or Polish. Yeah. That's the, it's a basic advantage. I mean, stability-wise, it's done. There are no major bugs in that, so it just works. But I think we will move uh, to the space over time, but that mostly depends on the people who, who work on it. <laughs> My motivation is pretty low on doing that because it works for me. How lively is the <coughs> community? The well, how? I, I don't know. There's some mailing list. I don't know. Most uh, most of the work is my experience with groupware services, uh, open groupware and scalable OMO, is that uh, a lot of people are not interested in, in doing that. So it's usually a small circle of developers uh, which are also have like businesses in that uh, domain. It's not like there's some student which likes uh, groupware services because it's a business application basically and it's very hard to, to get uh, <laughs> or build a community around that, but uh, I think we are about 10 to 20 guys or something like that which are actively involved. So, yeah. Can you tell us about the uh, current status of uh, CalDev compatibility with different clients? Is it 100% compatible uh, with Cal? I can um, um, Scalable Over doesn't implement all of CalDev. In fact, I think no server can support all of CalDev because it's quite complex. Uh, most Google servers actually um, implement a subset which is required to host uh, Apple iCloud. So that's so we get most the free busy. Um, free busy is supported actually. So. Um, that's also an add-on for Mozilla, uh, where Mozilla is extended for free busy functionality uh, with uh, scalable over. So it's not too bad. Um, but my opinion is that uh, people should rather use group that because it's much simpler uh, and you can actually implement implement all of that. Um, and CalDev can be pretty complex because you need to implement permission with an as a whole bunch of uh, stuff which is uh, connected to that. But I'm doing a kind of talk tomorrow, so <laughs> <laughs> I can come tomorrow. I think that's so the database mapping, because that's the first time the database mapping on the Zip Lab server, is that still using to the DLY? Yeah. Yes. And it has moved the DLY? Uh, no. Actually, uh, we are not using a lot of that in scalable algo because um, the GDL, or that's an object mapping framework for those uh, who don't know it, where you can map database uh, records to uh, objects, and that's too slow for what we are doing here at that scale. So we are only using the adapter le uh, le uh, level, that's a, it's like JDBC or something like that. That's, uh, that's what we use in scalable OGO, so it's not no mapping stuff. We don't really need any features of GDL2. I was thinking about database backend because. Uh, Actually, we, uh, there are Oracle adapters for that which are actively maintained. There's PostgreSQL, 
uh, we have. I think we have a lot more. Yeah, that does engineer one of SOPI than uh, engineer two. Um, I wrote a SQL like one, a MySQL one. What else do we have? We have a Cybers one. I think pretty much any Front database. Base. So Front base. Front base. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's given by an abstraction layer on the SOPI server. Um, yes, yeah, so this, this is actually uh, multiple libraries. So, uh, so that's reuse, reusable code, and the GDL library is also, or GDL1 library, is part of SOAP. But uh, technically, it's a GDL, it's like a new step database library. Uh, we just imported a previous version into the SOAP application server, which was working for us. And GNUSTEP is uh, continuing the development of the GNUSTEP database library uh, separately from that. So we built like the foundation situation. Uh, we have a pretty stable GDL1 library in here with a lot of connectors and stuff like that, very well tested. And uh, well, we could possibly probably change to GDL2, but it doesn't buy us a lot at this moment because you know, the stuff which is new in GDL2, it's not interesting for us because it's all higher level modeling stuff which, is, which we do not use. We need to go pretty much down to the database to, to get the necessary I speed. I think there are some, some things in the year one where um, stood away from, from the original version in order to give more speed like notification settings and stuff like that. That's all um, not, not in the only in the year one That's actually a modified GDL1 which we did some stuff which just uh, make, makes it faster or more reliable. For example, our version doesn't do uh, doesn't throw exceptions. We remove all exceptions, but return just proper error codes. So, because ex exceptions in Objective C are always well, a bit fishy. <laughs> 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 yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't trust them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there a plan to make authentication against Kadaros on um. the open world server? So, um, the regular one? Or the yeah, regular, regular. Um, no. I know that um, Inverse also has some deployments which uh, actually use uh, Active Directory as a as an LDAP yeah, service. Yeah. And I think, but I'm not not Kerberos expert. Uh, I know very little about that. Uh, on the Open Group Tour side, development is still going on, or now it's all well. For example, Sebastian is working on the new uh, base port, but functionality-wise, uh, well, there isn't a lot. Happening more than because the, the, the web interface of the open group where is, I mean, yeah. three years uh, later than yeah. the yeah. yeah. open and it's yeah. Yeah. legible but now by some users. I, well, it's mostly a matter of time because the people I know are fine with the web interface, but the plan is, um, well, the basic plan for me was using the scalable OGO interface and something which is called the side store server and open group there. The side store server does uh, the iCalendar and vCard stuff for open book web. So it maps things to iCalendar and vCard. And that's pretty similar to what uh, the scalable overall user interface does. So it could possibly reuse uh, the interface and the other yeah, open book. I, I would have liked to have some fun with trying the scalable because the open book one, the integration with the iCalendar and vCard is um, well. It probably certainly can be improved, that, that's true. Actually, I'm also doing a Java project with Open Group <laughs> <laughs> I hate Java. <laughs> so I actually implemented um, this is the whole stack from the Fed Open Group and Java. So there's actually an Ogo J now. Um, but well, it only has a customized user interface for one specific client. But it uses exactly the same database. Yeah. And it's also a modern user interface, but it's really tight. It's a internal information system for a pharmacy chamber, so they have pretty specific requirements. But maybe in that it evolves into a new open group, I don't know. In integration with proprietary software is allowed as a question, or? <laughs> of open group? Uh, both. Well, but a lot of stuff is LGPL. No, so no, no, I mean, my, my, pro my, don't, my first question for the next question is, can I make some question about proprietary integration? Can I ask for OpenOutlook? Is it integrated or...? Um, well, 
actually I'm working for a company which does them out of the plugin. Yeah. There's a new one coming, uh, oh. which is, okay. uh, we used to have an out of plugin for just for OpenBookFair, which was using uh, an own protocol to talk to the OpenBookFair server. And uh, we are just, in the last uh, three years, we are we were retargeting that output plugin to use Caldent and Cardtap. So you can actually use that plugin with any server with, which supports Cardtap and Caldent. So that's in the works. And, okay. and you're going to, to see all the calendars of mobile phones uh, and stuff like that because it was not compatible before. Well, mobile phones you could use Thunderbolt in the scalable mode. That's that working very well. Okay. Um, okay. But for OpenBooker you could uh, actually it can be a primary, a so-called primary store in Outlook, so you can replace your PSD file with that store, and then you can even synchronize uh, mobile devices with that. That's true. Okay. So it's much better. Outlook because I remember version. that the sync was going. You you have two stores basically. The one which is. Uh, the your, your primary one of the client and the secondary one which is given by the uh, plugin yeah, you, yeah, yeah. but was not syncing because it was pointing to the first one. Ex yeah, that's mostly a problem of Outlook because Outlook uh, can only sync a so-called default calendar okay. and um, to replace a PST file you need a so-called primary storage provider. And the old plugin could be one. It was okay. not complex enough. The new one? But the new one can be a oh, primary okay. store. Um, it's, well, it's reworked completely. It actually uses SQLite as a database, and um, you can take it as a replacement for PSD file. So oh, yeah. I had a project in which we, uh, we used Open Group where to substitute completely exchange, but uh, it's not. Yeah, it's it's not not it's more, um, the, the current plugin which we are now developing it doesn't do email yet, so you would still have to. You have the primary store which does the calendar and the address box, and then you have the IMAP connector from okay. and so it's one additional configuration what we are working on that one. Yeah, <laughs> the K point could push it in the real business. Maybe. Yeah, but it's not uh, different with Outlook in the general case. If you want a set of Outlook to use iMap, you still also get two. Yeah, usually yeah. if you have Outlook, you have to change the point is to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. More questions? Why don't you work on the Java version? The <laughs> <laughs> is so small. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting this question. <laughs> well, I'm prisoner. Let's do this, yeah. Okay. Sure. But because I'm also doing the work in Java, I can assure you it's much more awesome to work in Objective-C. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, who's next? I think we have a break. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you.